If you want to start changing your life and marching towards your seven figure and beyond aspirations, it's how you see things. Because how you see things is how you do things because perception is everything. So in this episode, I'm gonna be discussing the difference between opportunity and clocking in overtime. In this episode of Seven Figure Squad happening, three, two, one, let's go. everybody. My name is Smart Guy, Matt Zapali here, hailing to you from Seattle, Washington. Yes, we are out here in the SeaTac area, filming this at zero dark 30. The sun is still coming up. Hey, we're committed to posting a video every day from December 1st to December 24th for a Vlogmas 2020. And uh, you know, you gotta love everything here about Washington, another income tax free state here as well. The home of Microsoft, the home of Starbucks, the home of Amazon. And uh, when you're looking at this state here, wonderful state, I guess it's called the Evergreen State. I'm noticing all the trees out here, just beautiful, beautiful scenery. And a uh, conversation happened last night, and uh, we're mentoring uh, new entrepreneurs out here in the Seattle, Tacoma area. And a uh, conversation came up in their transition from employee to entrepreneur and them growing their business. Conversation came up because she's like, what's the conversation you have with people on converting their mindset from clocking in overtime to make more money? versus opportunity. And so one of the first ways I realized I was starting to look for opportunity versus overtime, just clocking in overtime, was realizing, number one, how I read the newspaper. <laughs> what am I talking about? Yes, in my hand, you want, what, Matt, what are you holding in your hand, my good friend, and in new inductee to the Seven Figure Squad community, the Seven Figure Squad income levels, is Rodolfo Vargas. Rodolfo Vargas is an immigrant from El Salvador, and every time we travel across the country, he laughs at me because every time we check into a hotel, one of the first things I gravitate to gain my information to get ahead up on a day is a newspaper. Yeah, call me old school, call me whatever, but there's nothing like reading a newspaper, feeling a newspaper, smelling a newspaper, writing on a newspaper, and I realized my life started to change when I constantly, and by the way, I'm a big jock, I love sports, I'm a big fan of sports. When I looked at a newspaper, I know my life started to change when I started doing like this. When I opened up a newspaper, boom, 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 I'd open up, okay, headline news. I used to read the world section of the newspaper all the time, in the, as well as the sports section, why? Because when I read the world section when I was in the military, I realized, based on some of the conflicts that's going on in the world, that whether a week later, a month later, or later on in the year, chances are I'd probably be there, and I better get up to speed what's going on in that part of the world. And then I'd go gravitate towards the sports section. Of course, I'm a Chicago Bears fan, Chicago Bulls fan. I grew up in the 80s and 90s watching Michael Jordan, watching the 85 Chicago Bears just slay everybody. The most dominant team in basically the history of the NFL was the 85 Chicago Bears with that 85 defense and the Super Bowl shuffle. But nevertheless, I started reading the sports section all the time to catch up what's going on, and who the new stars are going to be, who's coming out of college, who's going to get drafted, uh, who's going to be in the NBA, who's going to get drafted, slam dunk champion, the MVP of the NFL. I used to read up all those things in the sports section, and I started realizing a couple things. I started realizing a couple things when I started to want to change my life. How much money was one of those sections starting to put in my pocket? What am I talking about? When I started reading these things that basically entertained me, kind of filled my mind with whatever, I asked myself, would that fill my mind up with things that will empower me and improve me to say, hmm, let me look at how to put more money in my pocket, or was it just simply a way to escape? Was it simply a way just to say, okay, cool, fun, entertaining, uh, wait till tomorrow's newspaper, see what happens. But what started to really change my life was that I picked up the business and finance section, okay? Well, a lot of the, my, these newspapers have gotten so thin uh, over the years, but there's this different section in the newspaper, uh, depending on what uh, city and state you were, uh, uh, reading it, but I started reading the business section of the newspaper, which we'll go over today, and uh, I started saying, you know what, this is a new language, this is a new vocabulary, these are companies that I've seen but never really paid attention or really cared about, and man, look at this finance section, look at this, the, the money in the market section, what are these things called ticker symbols, what are things called the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, what are these things, I said, hey Marines, um, who knows how to read this section of the newspaper? Sergeant Hickmat, do you know how to read this? Because you're the most financially uh, versed person I know in the entire unit. Do you know how to read the finance and business section of the newspaper? Because I want to make some money. Looks like people are making money, just not us. Do you know how to read this stuff? 
Not in one hand, not one hand went up in my entire unit. Lack of financial education, lack of financial literacy, more important, lack of financial exposure. You will learn things if you're exposed to things. Probably some of you stumbled across my video and you're exposed possibly to this conversation about expanding your knowledge and thought base of wanting to become a first generation cash flow millionaire. I got exposed to this, nobody knew about it, and it intrigued me. I said, what are we doing here busting our tail for Uncle Sam? I love serving our country. I love being able to be, uh, put on this uniform. I love being able to represent America as an ambassador of the United States to other countries. I love being able to fight on behalf of America for the people I love and care about and what America stands for. And when I'm thinking about how to change my life then, to take advantage of the things I actually fought for and I actually stood for, how do I put now this fight back into an application to my own life? And it's not, it's not reading the business section. For example, what's going on in the business section today? You know, obviously there's a major push with the Biden uh, administration, and the president-elect Biden to come in and include diversity. I believe the whole press communications uh, team for the Biden-elect presidency are all women. The new Secretary of Defense, African-American male, Army General Lloyd Austin, right? So I'm looking at these things, I'm like, hmm, great job for these individuals to make sure that they position themselves for opportunity to be selected. Another one, Starbucks names Hobson as chair of board in Gain for Black Directors. The representation of women and people of color in U.S. companies has come under increasing scrutiny this year. These folks have placed themselves to be selected for diversity inclusion. So say, hey, not only am I uh, uh, representing a diverse culture, but I'm also the best person for the job. Hopefully this is the type of year that more multicultural becomes part of the board. I was just on a Zoom the other day wondering why more Filipinos aren't included in boards. We got together with the Filipino Executive Network. We got on a Zoom the other night. Say, hey, how can we help each other be selected to be part of boards across America? Whether Fortune 500 companies, whether everybody else, we just want to be part of boards. We, as a community, the Filipino American community, we need to be part of boards. We have some brilliant people that are part of that, uh, that Zoom the other night. People that went to, you know, fabulous uh, uh, colleges and obviously did the right thing, got the, got the job, got the grades just not included in, in boards across America. So I'm looking forward to that. I believe the NASDAQ said, if you're not going to be diverse in your board selection, we're gonna fire you and delist you from the NASDAQ. So <laughs> this is the year, this is the opportunity. This is what opportunity is telling me to position myself, not just clocking and clocking out for somebody else, but to position myself for opportunity. Another uh, conversation here that's happening right now. These three guys uh, from Stanford University, students, Tony Zhu, Andy Fang, and Stanley Tang. Those names sound familiar? I bet they don't. But guess what? They created this company called DoorDash. You know why? Because they're listening, because the, uh, they're listening to the shop owners, restaurant shop owners, saying, hey, we got some orders, but we can't hire somebody full-time to be a delivery driver, uh, be full-time, because we don't have enough orders to have a full-time delivery driver. I kept hearing this over and over and over and over again. Guess what they created? A website called DoorDash, and they eventually created an app called DoorDash, and the other day, DoorDash sold 33 million shares on Tuesday for $102 each. <laughs> and these Stanford University students uh, now have a company worth $3.37 billion. Why? Because they were listening. They were listening. They were not clocking in overtime. They're clocking in looking for opportunity. So as I wrap up here, my question to you is, as you wrap up 2020 and you go into 2021, what are you looking for? What's going to change for you? How am I going to approach being in a position of a better financial position? If all I'm doing is clocking and clocking out, how are you growing? You're exchanging time for dollars. And the wealthy and wealthy know this. You don't make money that way. You don't make money. Robert Kiyosaki said this book a long time ago, I read it in 1999. He says, rich, wealthy people don't trade time for dollars. Another part of his laws is that, listen, rich people also don't pay taxes. Why? Because they find ways to pay taxes in other different ways, just not through the personal income tax. So you look at this. How are you going to improve? How is your business plan that you're writing out for the end of 2020? Is your forecast yourself in 2021? Is it going to be more of the same? I hope not. If you said, man, I, I cannot survive without clocking in extra. Listen, right now, I would say you have a very big fortune position to even clock in for overtime. I'm flying here to here to SeaTac, and the people who were sitting last night work for the airlines. They work for the airport. And they said, we're just lucky just to have a stimulus check, to be able to clock in and have a job that pays us full time, let alone overtime. So as we go into this post, potentially post pandemic world or post vaccine, they're thinking about rolling out the vaccine by April, May, we're still four or five months away from it from the recording of this video. 
And on top of that, we're still months away from seeing how people are reacting to the vaccine. Some people are saying, oh, what happens if I actually have a reaction, an allergic reaction to the vaccine? We don't know, but people are taking it. So what's gonna happen? How are we going to make your money in 2021? I believe that this is something that you just can't take for granted. You know, it's gonna go back to 2019 levels where things are normal again. I think this is part of American fabric. I think this is part of how we're gonna work. So these are the things we gotta be thinking about if we're gonna have money sustained over a long period of time, not just for tomorrow, not just for next month, but if you wanna create seven figure income aspirations and create generational wealth, that you become a first generation millionaire, you have to consider thinking and rethinking about how you're going to make your money today and in the future. Think about your job as this. Your job temporarily is gonna be something that feeds the bills and pays the bills right now, that feeds a family, but you've got to have a long-term aspiration. You have the long-term goal in how to and actually apply some practicality about how you're gonna get together in the future. I hope that you picked an industry that regardless of what happens to the recession, regardless of what happens in a pandemic, that you still make money. Just like the folks were having a cigar with last night, heavily affected by travel, heavily affected by the travel in, in industry. And I think going forward, it's not gonna be easier. Uh, I just flew here on an airplane where a majority of American Airlines was still uh, not packed with, uh, with, with people in it. I was sitting there first class in, in a first row. Nobody was in first row. Nobody's there. It's a reflection of what's going on in America today and a big indication of what, what you need to do to make sure you're better, in a better financial position for this time next year. That being said, guys, I wanna know what, how you're doing in terms of looking for opportunity versus just clocking in overtime. What are you doing differently? What are you doing differently now? What do you look to be doing differently in the future? Is it a business? Is it a hot side hustle? Is it a gig? Is it just depending on uh, 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 Uber and Lyft, which is good for now, but long term as uh, Cruise is showing itself to say, hey, I'm gonna be uh, 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 having driverless cars in San Francisco. We're testing it there to compete at the home of Uber and Lyft. So that being said, guys, drop your thoughts, comments, and feedbacks in the comment section below. I'm wishing you well. Hopefully I'm encouraging you to see the world differently, to perceive it differently, because again, how you see things is how you do things. Remember one of the secrets of the millionaire mind? Your thoughts become feelings, they become actions, they become results. Uh, hopefully you're starting to turn your thoughts, feelings, and actions into a different perspective here going forward. Before I let you go, please check out this video here, three signs that you're ready for a career change. So therefore you're looking at things differently instead of overtime, now you're looking for opportunity. That being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like, follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. Again, here on Vlogmas 2020, where every day we're putting up a video to help you change your money game, expose you to different income strategies of 2021, and personal at least you developed it. Therefore, discover the next best version of you because we believe that the best of you is yet to come. That being said, guys, here from Seattle, Washington, about to jump into my board meeting here with the carries that we do business with. I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to live smart, and be money smart today. Thank <laughs> you.